Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the Paul Morphy saga and here uh, he faces a most dangerous opponent is German Grandmaster Daniel Harvitz and he arrived uh, in Paris and uh, at the moment when he arrived Morphy immediately asked if he would be interested in having a match against Morphy uh, but Harvitz declined and Morphy was uh, well borderline furious because he couldn't get a match with Staunton. Now he arrives here to challenge uh, uh, all, all the best players here. Now he gets a, a decline from, from Harvitz but but then, uh, as the crowd learned that uh, th there could be a match between Morphe and Harvitz, the crowd started also cheering, uh, and uh, Harvitz um, uh, started reconsidering whether to actually accept the, the match uh, uh, for, for Morphe or not. And uh, first he asked whether uh, Morphe was interested in playing one a casual game uh, before he decides whether he wants to play against Morphe. I guess that's how they did uh, things in those days. And Morphe agreed, and Morphe actually lost this game. But uh, it was it was a pretty weird challenge. Harvard said that Morphe uh, uh, g will get the black pieces and Morphe has to accept uh, the King's Gambit. And Harvard's obviously a, a great, uh, uh, well, uh, p a possessor of knowledge regarding the, the King's Gambit uh, was uh, able to win this game. Now, I did not know that this game actually exists uh, or, or that the moves were recorded, but they were. So I'm sorry I'm not presenting this game first, but I'm going to present this game in the, in, the, in the other video because I already prepared this one. Uh, but this is actually the first game uh, of their match. Uh, so later, after winning that game, Harvitz agreed to a game and uh, they uh, agreed to, to, to some terms. First, they had to decide whether they're going to have seconds, whether, whether there is going to be an umpire whether uh, they're going to play um, a match for money even though we all know Morphe was not allowed to do that uh, by by command of his family uh, but Morphe still said that uh, it doesn't matter that Harvitz does not have any backers as of yet but Morphe said that at any point in the match whether Harvitz uh, finds any backers or it doesn't matter how much money uh, he puts up uh, Morphe will uh, will uh, put up just just as much so in the end the match was decided to be played for 295 francs uh, so if any of you guys can do some calculating what what kind of a uh uh, what kind of cash are we talking about in today's terms you know if we take into consideration inflation and everything would also be very nice because when I do it you guys always say that I do it wrong and then you uh, write in the, uh, in the comments that you know no it's actually like this so uh, I would uh, very much appreciate it if, if you did it and then I can pin your comments so everyone else can enjoy so getting to this match we are going to uh, going to discuss a little bit of specifics um, uh, 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 regarding some stuff during the match but now let's just check out the game and uh, also, I would just like to mention that uh, Daniel Harvitz uh, had a uh, had a very famous match against Loventhal, and the the match was actually organized by none other than Howard Staunton, and uh, Harvitz won that match. But it was really funny because. Um, uh, Loventhal was leading like nine to one, and then in the end, uh, the the match ended by Harvitz winning, uh, I think, eleven to ten. So it was pretty crazy, and I think uh, Staunton definitely had something. Uh, going on uh, in there maybe a, even a bet or something because he was uh incredibly upset with uh, with Loventhal and uh, he, uh, he 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 never forgave him for for this great betrayal uh, so to say uh so there's a you know uh, a lot of stuff that we don't know uh, but okay getting uh, to this game Morphe now has the white pieces and this is the first game of the match Morphe Harvitz of the nine of the 1858 match in Paris so let's see how it went Morphe with the white pieces opens with e4 and I would just uh, like to mention that this is quite the game so I'm, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it uh, we have e5 by Harvitz knight to f3 and d6 we are in France so why not go for the for the Philidor's defense we have d4 Morphe immediately strikes in the center and now e captures on d4 and Morphe plays is queen captures on d4. Morphe was also a very big fan of sacrificing pawns with something like c3 captures and captures, but I guess he kind of respects Harvitz uh, not to, not to go for it um, this game. And also, it's not very good in this line. Like it's it's very much playable in the scotch, but maybe here it, it would be a, a bit too much. So here, queen captures on d4 by Morphe. Uh, knight to c6 attacking Morphe's queen and now bishop to b5 pinning that knight so the queen cannot be captured we have bishop to d7 and now bishop captures on c6 we have bishop captures on c6 and we get this position that um, 
uh, this game was played in 1848 and this position uh, stood the test of time uh, Aliyehin became uh, played this position uh, a lot with white and even I found a game between uh, uh, Alexander Shabalov uh, and uh, the great attacker Larry Krishanensen from the year, from last year from 2020 in the US Senior Championship where uh, Shabalov won a very nice game uh, with the white pieces in this line so definitely stood the test of time as you know even even with uh, today's engines uh, it, it's still okay so here uh, and knight to c3 would would be played today but okay in those days bishop to g5 by morphe of course uh, uh, over the course of some 150 years uh, uh, modern theory and engines improved all the lines to to perfection so here bishop to g5 attacking the queen knight to f6 just continuing development preparing bishop to e7 and castles and now knight to c3 uh, we have bishop to e7 and the Morphy now castles queen side. Morphy often was a huge fan of uh, uh, opposite uh, side castles because then you could freely push your pawns and attack your opponent's king side. Uh, we have king side castle and now rook h to e1. And Morphy is now fully developed. The knights, the bishop uh, is here. The rooks are fully operational here also controlling the DD file. Uh, but one thing you have to notice is that Morphy no longer has the bishop pair. So let's see how this goes. We have h6 asking Morphy do you want to retreat? or do you want to capture here uh, Morphe retreats once and now knight to e8 offering a trade of dark square bishop so Morphe has to choose whether where to go back whether to trade whether maybe some e5 uh, action is possible here uh, but okay Morphe goes for bishop captures on e7 it is the uh, it is perfectly fine queen captures and now we have e5 and this position has never been reached again uh, as of as of move 13 and it's very interesting this e5 idea is uh, uh the, 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 is one of the the strongest moves in the position there is a game from 2005 where knight the d5 was played but the e5 is, is definitely better here so here uh black needs to now uh, figure out what to do the rooks are obviously going to become extremely powerful if the if these two pawns disappear so here first bishop captures an f3 eliminating one of uh, one of uh, Mor Morphe's pieces doubling up his pawns and also not being afraid of opening up the G file so let's see how this goes uh, and you you can do an uh, in between move uh, like a nice fish and suk here with e captures and d6 uh, like open up an attack on the queen and you're gonna capture the bishop next because just check and then you you uh you you have to react to this and then you're also going to lose uh, uh material here or or yeah you, you could also play just rook d2 but then just uh, queen captures and you don't get to recapture the bishop so same stuff so after bishop captures morphe has to recapture and now we have queen to g5 check king b1 always a useful move uh and now d captures on e5 we have rook captures on e5 attacking the queen and now queen to g2 still keeping an eye on the g1 square not allowing morphe to uh get uh, his rook over to the g1 square because then he would be able to uh well put a lot of pressure on, on black's king side so here knight to d5 morphe happily brings yet another attacker into the attack uh saying that black doesn't really have a good move uh, you can't really go something like this because just check and you will you will lose that uh uh, that rook uh, and other than that you don't really have many active moves so here black just uh, calmly plays uh, queen captures on h2 grabs a pawn and it seems completely crazy to do something like this in in, in this position uh, but it's uh, very hard for uh, for Morphe to find the move uh, but there is one move that uh, stands out but it's an extremely hard move to find so I'm not gonna ask you to pause the video uh, because it's just super weird uh, here uh, Morphe played uh, rook back to e1 because he really wants to get the rooks over to the g and h file but here f4 was actually extremely strong the idea behind f4 uh, is that you want to prevent the queen from uh, going anywhere on this diagonal and now next you want to play rook to e1 and then start harassing that queen because the white queen covers the f4 and f2 pawns so something maybe to consider uh but uh probably M morphe was uh not uh, uh still not uh, ready to play at his best because it's it's only the first game uh and the f there's really no good move here for black i mean you, you could start pushing those pawns on the queen side but white should definitely be faster uh so instead after this uh queen captures on h2 this was not played morphe started with rook uh, to e1 now preparing to shift the rooks to the g and h file but now queen back to d6 and this is a really active move for the black queen which could have been prevented with a move like f4 and okay rook to g1 now morphe has some incredible pressure here along the uh g file and this diagonal king to h7 getting out of uh any uh, unnecessary knight checks uh so 
Uh, okay, you, you still have access uh, with, with knight to f6 check, but it's not as potent. Uh, so here we have queen to e3 by Morphe. And now again, what do you do? Uh, you don't really have any good discoveries with the knight, but here uh, black could uh, very well just play knight to f6, offer, uh, uh, offer that everything gets traded off, and even if white goes knight to e7, opens up a discovery towards the black queen, after queen e6, there's not much white can do here. For example, queen d3 check, king h8, and now rook d to e1. Yes, you don't have to trade, but now after queen to b6, it is a completely unclear position where uh, anything, any, anything could happen. So... Uh, this is uh, this is one possibility, but here black instead went for f5, and it looks uh, very dangerous because you already weakened the king side. Now you play f5, so can Morphe take advantage of this? Well, Morphe starts with knight to f4, remaneuvers the knight with an attack on the queen here. We have queen to b6, offering a queen trade, and Morphe definitely not interested in a queen trade. It just moves the queen to e2. Uh, so again, it's very hard. The black's rooks are not connected. Uh, the rook can come to d7. The queen can come to e7. There can, uh, you know, a, a lot of pressure is um, uh, being put towards black's king side. And here, rook to f7. This is the absolute strongest defensive idea, and it just shows you how strong Harvitz is. Uh, because one could easily uh, blunder the game completely by, let's say, uh, you, you just look at your position. You say, okay, my rooks are not connected. Let's just start with knight f6, and then we're going to develop. Uh, but the problem is then queen e7 and you're completely destroyed. This is the threat of checkmate. After you block this, you start bringing more attackers into the game. And now once you defend this one more time, for example, queen f7 and that's, uh, that's game. The rook is coming to g6 and it's simply too much pressure for black to handle. Just to show you how funny a position is, for example, if king h8, rook to g6 now. Uh, one more defender and also uh, preparing rook captures on h6 after you make this rook lift and now there's not much for, for black to do whatever you play let's say you bring a rook into the game just rook to d7 and that's it pretty crazy position black can play whatever threat and checkmate but then you just deliver this check and it's game over for example captures and the queen to h7 checkmate so this is what is in the position. Uh, but okay, after queen to e2, like we said, Harvitz goes for the absolute best defensive idea, rook to f7. And now Morphe starts by improving the position of his pieces. Queen c4 with an attack on this rook. And now queen to f6, bringing the queen back here to help out with the defense. We have knight to h5, attacking the queen, putting more pressure on g7. And now queen to e7. This is the only move because otherwise you, you lose the rook. So queen to e7, the only possible move for black and now rook d to e1 again chasing away the black queen queen to d7 and now morphe wants to start uh, lifting those those rooks but he has some back rank issues if, if the rooks uh, get, get away from the back rank queen d1 is checkmate so morphe decides to waste the move uh, by playing a3 and now okay his king gets a breeding square here on uh, on a2 and uh, now he's going to start uh, bringing those rooks into the game. But this also means that black now gets an extra move to help out with the defense. So knight to d6. Uh, with tempo, the queen is under attack. So queen to d4. And now with a triple attack here. But it's fine. It's defended three times. And now again, black with the absolute best uh, rook, rook to g8. And this is pretty crazy. Uh, again, you could easily blunder the game here just to show you how sensitive the position is with something like rook to e8. You say you want to trade some pieces here, but then you run into rook captures on g7 with check. Uh, point is that after rook captures, knight f6 check picks up the queen. And now you would be able to capture the queen because you don't care about this. You've played a3 and you don't have to be worried about any back rank issues. So here after queen to d4, rook to g8 again. Harvitz playing the absolute monstrosity of a defense. Uh, rook to g8, and now Morphe starts, uh, uh, the, well, he, he prepares with rook to g2. Now he can either double up on the g file, or he can play a rook to h1 to uh, bring another attacker into the game. But now uh, Harvitz plays knight to e8. He offers a queen trade, and it's uh, not easy for Morphe to decline. But Morphe is not interested in a queen trade. Morphe keeps the pressure with queen to c3, but now the position is... Uh, pretty bad for Morphe, but it's so difficult to find why the position is, uh, well, close to lost, uh, but that's where you guys come in. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the absolute best move for uh, Harvitz uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. It's not an easy one. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, F4. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, yeah, it's F4. And I know what you're thinking, like, what's F4? I mean, wh what does F4 even do? Uh, well, the, what it does is that it traps the knight on H5. It's pretty crazy, but uh, the, now this pawn is guarded. Uh, you cannot move the knight. You can't bring the knight here, here. And also it takes away the G3 square from the knight. So this is, this is insane. Uh, to, to spot such a thing. This is what Morphe missed and now he's definitely in trouble. Here Morphe started with rook to h1, bringing uh, a rook to defend the knight. Uh, but this simply doesn't work. I will show you one possible defense, but it's so so uh, so disgusting that, you know, maybe maybe I even shouldn't. Uh, point is, you, you should play rook to e5 because it comes with a trick. g6, okay, the knight uh, cannot move and the knight will be captured. But now queen to e1. And now the point is, if the knight is captured, now you have this uh, really, really awesome queen to e4 check. And only after the king moves, now you eliminated the defender of the knight with check. King captures and the rook captures here with check. And now white will have a superior game. However, uh, this is not forced. After queen to e1, black, of course, will not capture the knight black will just play the simple uh, knight to g7 and then okay morphe does not lose the knight we have something like captures captures but black still uh retains a, a better position he's up a pawn and he has a better pawn structure uh if anyone will be pushing for something here it's definitely black so uh it's a bad position but uh with rook to e5 it it uh, may be able uh, morphe may be could could still save it but uh here morphe played rook to h1 and now uh simply it's just bad g6 was played instantly by harvitz i imagine uh and now uh rook h to g1 this is how morphe tries to keep his peace now if captures then the rook falls but now just queen to d5 and now again the knight is under attack the knight has no squares and uh, there's, uh, well, really nothing you can do here. Queen to e1 was played by Morphe. He prepares one last trick to maybe save him. Queen captures on h5 and now even rook to g5. Uh, his idea was, okay, maybe if pawn captures then rook to h1, I can win the queen. But still that's... Um, uh, black has too much material even just capturing with check it's still two rooks and a knight against the queen with black being up a pawn in a better pawn structure it's uh it, it is a lost position for morphe but okay it's the first game so why not uh, you know at least try how how harvitz uh, handles every and all positions so here uh, harvitz just played uh, queen captures on f3 it's the best idea we have queen to e6 now with a triple attack on the pawn here, uh, but now rook to f6. Everything is very easily uh, defended here. Queen e7 check, and now even rook g7, offering the knight because the rook falls. So here, queen captures on e8. There really isn't anything better. We have h captures on g5, and now queen uh, back to e8. And here, after Morphe played this, uh, Harvitz just brought back the queen with queen to c6, and it was in this position on move 37 that Paul Morphy resigned the game. And uh, the first uh, game of the match goes to Daniel Harvitz, and what, what a game it was. So not only did he win the first one that we are going to show, uh, that's not a part of the match. It was the game that actually uh, got Harvitz to even play a match with Morphy because he, okay, he saw, okay, uh, maybe, I, I can play against this guy. Uh, but now Morphe lo loses the actual first official game of the match. So this is uh, uh, definitely something new and we're going to have a lot of fun covering this match. But for the next video, uh, we are showing the uh, game that got Harvitz to, to even, uh, you know, grant Morphe the, the honor of challenging him to a match. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, very weird to see Morphe starting with a loss, but uh, what are you going to do? Uh, I would like to thank Veton Nassimi, uh, Barry McMurdoch, Vince Oshina Barry, uh, Bruce T. Berger, and uh, Bob Skoman, who is celebrating his 60th birthday. Uh, congratulations on that uh, achievement, and thank you, uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for, for the hardly contributions. Uh, so, yeah, uh, once again, uh, that's, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I, I will see you guys. Like I said, uh, we're going to cover uh, this game next, and it's going to be it's going to be awesome. And for those of you who might have missed yesterday's stream, we had a lot of fun talking about chess and physics with my friend Andrei Dundovic. So if you if you're interested in checking that out, I will put a link to it in the description below. Will be the the first thing that you see. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.